Dinosaurs were once viewed as primitive and lumbering beasts, but we have since learned that through their 165 million year domination of the planet, they were the pinnacle of evolution at their time, while mammals had been brushed away as an insignificant sideshow by their dinosaur overlords. But with the rise of the mammals and their 65 million years to evolve without the presence of their extinct rulers, if sent back to the Cretaceous, what mammals, if any, could survive alongside the dinosaurs? Our first mammal we are going to send back to the late Cretaceous is the monkey. The monkey would negate most predation solely through their arboreal lifestyle, basically finding a loophole around direct competition with the highly specialized predators that roam the land. The only thing they'd have to worry about would be pterosaurs, early birds, or maybe even large sauropods grazing in the trees. But let's get a little more specific. There are tons of different types of monkeys, so to make this a bit more straightforward, we're going to be focusing on the capuchin monkey. And I picked this monkey because I love the Night at the Museum movies. I mean, who doesn't? No, but seriously, the reason I picked this monkey was because I believe it would have the best matchup in its new environment. Let me explain. The capuchin is considered to be the smartest new world monkey, so smart in fact that it uses tools, specifically by taking rocks and using them to open fruits, and is one of the few examples of primate long-term tool use other than by apes and humans. They also have opposable thumbs and prehensile tails. These tails are directly adapted for grasping or holding objects, and makes it much easier to eat while not worrying about falling off the tree. But along with all these facts, one huge point is they basically can eat anything and don't specialize in any particular type of food. In their Cretaceous, most fruits that exist today hadn't yet evolved, or if they did, they were very primitive. So monkeys that only eat fruits would have been screwed. Although the cabbage monkey gets most of its nutrition from fruits, it can and will eat insects, leaves, small birds, eggs, frogs, clams, basically anything they can get their hands on. Lastly, they are very sociable animals that live in groups of 18 to 20 individuals, and would allow them to maybe fight off or scare away any predators that did find them and think they would be a good snack. These monkeys in the modern day already contend with boa constrictors, jaguars, hawks, and eagles, and I don't see any large theropods going after such a small meal, so they will likely be able to withstand predation from the predators that could reach them in the treetops. So really, the only issue I see the capuchin monkey having is finding a stable source of food. So, when putting all these factors together, I am going to give the capuchin an A. Their arboreal lifestyle would be extremely powerful in the Cretaceous, along with their intelligence, but they didn't hit the S position because finding a stable source of food would be a challenge and their greatest barrier to overcome. And it's quite possible they would have to focus more on eating smaller animals, and more likely, dinosaur eggs. Our next mammalian contender is the wolf, more specifically, the gray wolf. The gray wolf is the largest wild dog to currently inhabit the earth, with the largest standing about three feet tall, and it can be found in a vast range of ecosystems across North America, Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. Grey wolves are known for their complex social structures. Wolves form family-based packs led by an alpha male and female, with their pack sizes typically ranging anywhere from 2 to 12 members, though certain packs can grow up to 20 to 30 wolves strong. This complex social structure requires quite a bit of intelligence, and can be seen in how the wolves communicate through howls and body language. Other than this, wolves are fierce predators. Being opportunistic hunters, they will gladly scavenge a meal when they can, but when they do hunt, they are typically run down their prey separating it from its herd if needed, surrounding it, and biting down on the animal until it's too weak to fight any longer. This is where the wolf finishes the kill. Typically, the wolf's main targets are deer, moose, elk, caribou, and sometimes bison. But wolves will also eat smaller animals like beavers, rabbits, mice, and squirrels. Wolves are a predator that you do not want to encounter in the wild. But how would they do in the Cretaceous? Well, there's a few factors that would lead to their success or demise. For one, securing food. The largest prey the wolves face today are bison, which can weigh anywhere from 1,000 to 2,200 pounds. Nevertheless, wolves will try to prey on smaller targets like elk before hunting down a bison. This is because the bison can do some serious damage to a pack of wolves, especially a full-grown healthy one, and because of this, wolves will usually avoid them and instead target the young or the sick. Whereas in the Cretaceous, many of the herbivores were absolute giants, even compared to the bison. And in the Arctic regions of the Cretaceous, we know of a few dinosaurs that roamed the area, such as the Pachyrhinosaurus and some other duck-billed dinosaurs. And you gotta remember, this was a time where herbivores' main defensive tactic was growing to be huge. In turn, each of these animals could have weighed anywhere from two to four times that of the largest animals the wolves hunt today. And yes, there are likely smaller prey, just the fossil record doesn't reflect that just yet. 
They would also have to compete with many predators highly adapted to hunting the fauna of that age. Basically, the wolves would have to break into a highly saturated niche against many animals that were too large for them to even consider handling, while simultaneously competing against predators better equipped to handle the prey like the Nanuxaurus. However, wolves do have an ability that they will greatly benefit from, their pack structure, which possibly wasn't present at all during this era. And these wolf packs, similar to how they hunt the bison, focusing on the sick or the young, would have to attempt to do this with the giant herbivores before they got too large. And in between these big scores would have to survive off of smaller ancient mammals. And taking all these factors into consideration, I am going to place the wolves at D. I place them here because again I see them struggling to compete against many predators of the time. Along with the wolf's comparatively smaller size, the wolf in its pack would struggle securing food. Quick plug, if you guys like this video, I did two other videos just like this, so once you're done watching this one, go ahead and watch those, because if you like this, then you'll love that. Anyways, our next mammal we are putting up against the dinosaurs is the beaver. The beaver is a very strange animal, and it is remarkable as it is one of the only animals to be able to significantly alter its ecosystem. It is also known as one of the largest rodents in the world, with the North American beaver growing up to 3 feet long. However, like with many other rodents, they are very vulnerable to predators, so the beaver has evolved some pretty clever adaptations to survive. Firstly, their semi-aquatic lifestyle, which allows them to quickly and easily escape both threats on and off the land. Specifically, they've evolved a distinct head shape to keep them safe. Their eyes and ears sit almost on top of their head, giving them the option to hover on the waterline watching out for predators while staying relatively safe. Combined with this, while on land they're slow, in the water they're quite quick, and can swim faster than Michael Phelps, owing in part due to their specialized tails that allow them to paddle. Two more things, they can hold their breath for up to 15 minutes, which just adds on to why they're such elusive prey for modern predators to get a hold of. And the most remarkable part of all, their engineering capabilities. Beavers use sticks, trees, grasses, and muds to build beaver dams, which they use as a place for shelter as well as refuge for predators. And they build these dams in such a way that only they can access them, building their entrances underwater and having their dens above the waterline, giving them a warm and dry place to sleep and raise their young. And these dams can get huge, with the largest being about 2,700 feet long. So how would beavers do if sent back to the Cretaceous? Well, their dam building technique would still be extremely useful and would allow them to avoid being preyed upon by many theropod dinosaurs. But while it's under construction or while they're gathering supplies, they would be extremely vulnerable. Also, there are even some chances that giant dinosaurs could step on and destroy the dams, though that being a common occurrence is unlikely. Their main point in which they might struggle is adapting to the foods of the Cretaceous. Currently, their main food sources are leaves, woody stems, and aquatic plants. Almost all of these would be completely different to what we have today. If they could eat these plants, then their time would be much easier, whereas if not, it would be next to impossible. So if the beavers could eat the plants there, I would place the beaver at B. I choose B because the adaptations that make the beaver successful today would still be useful in the Cretaceous. Nevertheless, they would most certainly face stiff predation from many theropod dinosaurs. But if the beavers can make their dams and are able to secure food, they would most certainly be able to survive, much as they do today. Basically, the beaver would act similar to how the ancient mammals lived, hiding away instead of direct competition, just as a more advanced version. And the next contender of these mammalian trials in the Cretaceous is going to be the giraffe. And we're going to get right into this one. The giraffe is the long neck of the modern age and uses this long neck for many purposes, most notably to reach the top of trees for leaves. But it can also use its neck for many defensive purposes. For one, it could use it to spot predators from a long distance. They could also use their necks as weapons, using them to attack would-be threats. Their necks are not the only weapons they have. They also have their extremely long legs, which they use to kick away and defend themselves and their young from predators. Overall, the large size of the giraffe keeps them safe from many of the modern threats they face today, making it extremely difficult for even a pride of lions to take these guys down. So how would they do in the Cretaceous? Well, the giraffe is kind of the equivalent to the long neck sauropods that roamed during this time. But there's just one big difference. The giraffe is way smaller. For reference, a giraffe weighs around 2,500 pounds, and the sauropods of the Cretaceous weighed around 80,000 pounds or more. So yeah, saying there's a difference in size is an understatement. In terms of predators, giraffes would encounter significantly larger threats than those present in their current environment. Just for some notable comparisons, 
the largest theropods would literally be larger than the giraffe, the tallest animal that is alive today. So relying on their size as their main defensive tactic would no longer be a reliable way to survive. Overall, the giraffe is just a really bad version of the sauropods. They're too small to face the predators and would also likely be outcompeted for resources by the large herbivores. So I will be placing the giraffe at F. Who would have guessed it? The giraffe is well adapted in the modern environment to face off against small predators, but the presence of large theropods would most certainly be too challenging for the giraffe to overcome. In my next videos, I'm going to see if mammals like the walrus, lion, jaguars, platypus, whales, and many more can survive in the Cretaceous. So stay tuned for that, and if you have an animal you want added, comment below. In the future, I will be doing prehistoric mammals as well. So also comment your favorites below for that. Remember, if you like this, go check out my other two videos. The link is in the description. And thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and Jehona out.